He calls President Obama's crusade against Arizona's law irresponsible and the response to the BP oil disaster lackluster. Just a couple of reasons the New York Times has dubbed him the annoyer in chief. But California Congressman Darrell Issa considered, considers it a compliment because he says he's on a mission to raise issues about the administration that have largely been ignored and underreported. Congressman Issa is the ranking Republican on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. You're looking at him now. You don't seem annoying, Congressman Issa. Let's see if your track record reflects that. Welcome back. Oh, thanks for having me back, Brian. And you know how uh, if somebody asks you a question you don't have an answer, sometimes you get annoyed? Yes. That seems to be how I got the title of annoyer in chief, is there's no answers to the questions, at least not from Robert Gibbs. Well, let's give you, let's give the viewers some, uh, let's go look back at how you became an annoyer uh, in chief. Number one, ACORN. What was the issue there that you think got under the administration's skin? Well, I think the fact that it was distorting uh, democracy with funds coming right out of uh, the federal government. And we asked that basic question, which is, is it a criminal enterprise? And we did 33 pages in a minority report that showed it very much was. And, of course, ultimately, we're proven right. Uh, and at the same time, the administration kept trying to refund an organization as we proved that it should be defunded. You also pointed out that Timothy Geithner had a role in the AIG uh, bailout before we needed a bailout and was very much a part of what went wrong on Wall Street as well as the SEC had a little distraction. Well, and of course, the problem with Tim Geithner was that the administration chose to promote somebody who was really sitting there in New York uh, not just asleep at the wheel, but he was an enabler for many of the things that ultimately we right. paid billions for. So that got under their skin. The backroom health care deals that gave us health care reform that's wildly unpopular even today. That annoyed them. Well, what annoys them is interesting there because they, they haven't actually answered. Uh, I've been told basically you're not getting an answer without a subpoena from most, but not all of the organizations. Some were forthcoming to say, yeah, we were forced to do it, and here's what we did, and here's what we got for it. They were picking the Democratic candidates they wanted to win and making deals to make sure it happened, like with Congressman Sestak and with Romanoff. You pointed that out. Well, you know, my questions there uh, got the answer that it was business as usual, and it probably is, but it's not the change the American people voted for or the one that was promised by the administration. And it appears as though clearly they're not changing everything, especially not when it comes to using your tax dollars to distort elections in their favor. And you put them over the top when you took on the Arizona law, immigration law, defended it, and the BP oil spill, the lack of progress there. Well, sadly, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, look at the BP oil spill as the questions we're asking are really to point out in real time how they could do a better job, how they could cut through the bureaucracy that they're creating so that 85 days plus in, you've got people who haven't been allowed to do mm -hmm. what they've asked to do to protect themselves. If pointing out legitimate questions to legitimate policies is annoying, you certainly are that. Congressman Isaac, congratulations on your new title. You've earned it. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. All right.